Welcome to the A to Z of Dynamics 365 Marketing. We've reached the letter J and that's all about journeys. Let's take a look. At the heart of the Dynamics 365 Marketing app is really the customer journeys. This is where you're taking all of the content you've created, your marketing emails, your marketing forms, and you're putting it all together to take someone through various stages. You're able to have somebody fall in or out of those journeys, depending on whether things happen on their records, that kind of thing. We're also using segments to tie this in together. So let's go ahead and have a look at a simple customer journey that we're going to set up. So in the app, I'm going to click on customer journeys and we're going to go ahead and create a new one. Now we've got some templates that we can select from. So we can click on the different ones and we can see a bit of a description about what it's going to be. A lot of times it's just a simple email journey. So it's basically picking a segment or picking a group of people that have filled out a form and then sending them an email. Simple. What we're going to do in this one is we'll have a process that will be a series of emails that will be sent to customers to kind of get them onboarded and send them information. So we'll pick that one and then select it. Now what we're going to see is this sort of canvas area where we can see who's going to be on this journey and then what emails are we going to send to them. Now in order to select an audience and then select the content, this is stuff that really needs to be live. So if we are picking a segment, it has to be a segment that you've made live. So I'm going to click to say I want to set the audience. Now I've got different types of audiences that I could have. I've got a segment, which is what we're going to use. I've also got something where we've got updated contact information, or we could say if somebody submitted a specific form. I'm gonna pick a segment and I'm also going to then say, okay, this is an inclusion and we're including people that are in the customer list. Now, depending on how you set up that segment, that customer list can be something based on the logic of new accounts or accounts that have been had a field set to say they're a new customer as of this date, whatever it might be that would determine any context, contacts tied to that account would fall into your segment. So you want to make sure that your segment makes sense. Then what we're able to do is say, okay, well, the first email we're going to send, we're going to choose an email and we're going to be able to see emails that have been made live. So I'm going to pick email one. We get to see um, the overview of what it looks like. And then we can scroll down and we can make sure that this is scheduled to go out on days that we would want it to. So the purpose of having the segment and having this journey would be for an ongoing journey so that a contact could fall into it at any time when the account they work for actually becomes one of your customers. I don't want that to go out on a Saturday or a Sunday, so I'm going to untick those and I certainly don't want it to go out at midnight potentially. So I'm going to say, and it should only go out from maybe nine o'clock between nine o'clock and five o'clock. And those are the time frames that I would want this to potentially go out. So we've set our schedule, we've put in all the information we need, and then we're gonna go on to, well, what's the next email? And that would be email two. And again, we can review our schedule and we can make changes to it on the days and also on the time. And then finally, what we'd want to do is put in our last one, choose that email and let's put in the third one. And same thing again, we can make those changes. Now in between there, we have these sort of wait statuses where at the minute it's saying, let's wait for a month between sending those emails. I might want it to be a slightly shorter time frame, so I can change that and I can say, well, actually the duration would be two weeks between week one and week, uh, sorry, email one and email two. And then maybe this one would be three weeks instead of a month. So we can make those changes. Now, what we also might want to do is say, okay, well, once they get to the end and they get that last email, we could potentially do some kind of check to see if they've actually opened the email. And if they haven't, maybe we're going to set a phone call record for someone to actually go ahead and follow up and check in with them. So from here, I can click on this little plus, and then I can do a branch that says, if then, so if they've opened it, let's do nothing. If they haven't, we need to have somebody call them. 
So let's just go ahead and switch this so that we can see and scroll down. There we go. So now what I can do is I can say if email three has been opened. So if yes, we're basically not going to do anything. If not, um, and sorry, well, let's go ahead and wait for three days. If it hasn't been opened, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in an activity and create a phone call activity. Now for this, I need to have set up a specific template for a phone call or a task or an appointment. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick this one and I'm gonna go ahead and assign that to the contact owner. So I can set up information so that a phone call record will be created and assigned to somebody. If I go ahead and let's click on the general tab so we can give this a name or we can say new customer onboarding. It's targeted at contacts. I can also set the minimum, minimum consent. So I might say, okay, well they have to at least have transactional selected. And then I can give it a start date and time. Now, if I pick the eighth today and I go ahead and I could actually change and set this time, even though it's already um, 2.50, what I could do is I could say, well, actually, let's have this start at two. Now, because I've said it starts in the past, it's going to start trying to send those first emails as soon as possible. I then have an end date and time. So what I could do is I could actually set this way into the future because maybe I'm saying I want it to go on for a really long time. I don't want to have to worry about it stopping. Or maybe it's a journey that I'm doing just for a couple of weeks so I can set the time frame accordingly. We can also have recurring customer journeys so that the um, journey can recur over and over again. So for example, if we are trying to ask people to fill out information about um, a profile, maybe they are speakers at an event and we need them to fill that out. I can say that the journey will recur over and over again and maybe it will recur up to six times and it will recur every two days. What I can also do is, let's say that you have, for this example, let's just remove those because this is not going to be recurring. Let's say in this example, we have a customer list and that segment is basically saying pull in all contacts where the account that they work at is listed as a client. If they become, um, if that changes and they're no longer a client, we don't want to send them the second or the third email. We want to stop them in their journey. So what we can do is we could set up an opposing um, segment that instead of saying show me all contacts where the account record has the relationship status of client, we would do one where it says does not equal client and that would be our suppression list. So that means if the customer falls into that because they're no longer a customer, we won't be in danger of sending them details or sending them emails. Okay, so once I'm done, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to check for errors to see if there's anything wrong with this. Our customer journey passed the error check, that's awesome. Now we can go live with that specific customer journey. That will then start it right away. The emails might take a, a little bit in terms of the first ones going out. If we look here, it tells us the customer journey passed the error check and insights are not generated until a customer journey's gone live. That's fine. We know that we've got the insights tab. If I go into one of the other ones, um, so this one is actually a recurring one. And what we'll end up seeing is we'll get some details where we can see the volume of um, times that journey has been processed or the, the number of people that have gone through it. We've got a delivery funnel here and then we can see some KPIs. So we can see some information about this specific customer journey. We can also look at the, um, the overview for this one. We can see delivery, links, interactions, open times, and this is going to be about those emails that I've sent. So we can see that we've had emails that have been delivered all this time, and that is because the email is part of that customer journey that we're able to actually review the details for it. So customer journeys, there are so many different things that you can do with this, so many different use cases and possibilities. So definitely get to grips with customer journeys, learn about all of the different pieces that you can use. Um, and yes, J is for journeys. 
Hi, I'm Megan Walker. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and that you learned something from it. If you don't want to miss out on any other content, you can go ahead and click on my face below to subscribe. And if you want to watch the next video, you can do that by clicking over here and go ahead and get started. Thanks again.